All right, so if you want to grow to your Pokemon business or any business, whatever, if you're if you're clicking on this and you're not even uh, running a Pokemon business, a lot of it nowadays is through social media, being able to get those people who see your face or have a have a trustworthy brand or whatever it is in your industry. Uh, but I'll be focusing specifically on Pokemon business here. Uh, uh, you know, cards, sealed product, uh, services like middleman or whatever it is, uh, and and why it's really powerful and what you can do to actually grow those uh, certain platforms. So I'm gonna be looking at uh, three ones that we've gotten over a million views on. We've gotten a YouTube channel, which got over 2 million views. Uh, Instagram doesn't really count views, but you know when I was posting a decent amount about a month ago, because in the past month we moved and I didn't have really any content to post because all of our content is based off of how our auctions go or what cards are coming in. I, really, I had not, enough, nothing to post. Uh, but we got like 1.3 something million uh, uh, impressions, they call them, which really isn't, you know, it's just someone seeing the seeing the actual account. But um, it, there was like 400 or almost half a million accounts actually viewed uh, our content. So if you look at over a few month period or, or probably, you know, over the lifespan, it's definitely over a million uh, people have seen the actual content that we put out. And as well as TikTok. TikTok, I'll just briefly go over it, but... Over like a 40 day period, a couple of years ago, posted, uh, you know, try to grow it and posted content every couple of days and grew to like, uh, it's like two point, I don't know, two point, two and a half million views over that 30 day period from a zero uh, account. And I didn't even post, you know, cross post anything and just say, hey, it was YouTube, watch that. You know, it was just uh, organic and it was, uh, that was an interesting experience. But anyway, so those three platforms. The first one, let's just go over um, because I think it's what most people, well, the people who are watching, are watching YouTube. Um, so YouTube is a, a platform that's really going to suck at first. It might suck the whole time uh, because YouTube is going to probably be the least amount of views total overall if you're posting in every platform, just because you know YouTube it's not force fed, right? I mean, unless you're looking at shorts, but I'm talking about kind of kind of long form content when people kind of know your brand, know who you are. Um, you know, it's kind of longer form, not just, you know, 30 second shorts is really going to have people how to, how to know who you are. Granted, there are always exceptions. There are people that do really well in shorts and people that know them through that and blah, blah, blah. But uh, I'm just, uh, my expertise is probably more uh, on the long form side. Um, like I said, it's going to suck because it's not force fed. People actually have to look at, find your video on either their homepage or search for it and then see your thumbnail and then see your title and say, yep, I want to actually watch that and click on it. Whereas something like uh, TikTok or Instagram, people are just scrolling and it just shows up just because of, uh, you know, your post has uh, good, uh, you know, uh, engagement in the algorithm, you know, or the computer or whatever feels like you would like that. Um, YouTube is not like that. It's it's just, it's out there, but you actually have to physically click it. And there's a lot of stuff that might, you know, you might actually like, but you're just not going to click it because you have other things that, you know, you're scrolling, you might have on the homepage, 10 different options. Yours has to stand out with those uh, to be able to click, right? And, uh, you know, I could do a much better job of that. My thumbnails are just the first auto-generated one that happens. And, uh, you know, just hopefully the title is good enough and people... Uh, for people to click it, so yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be really difficult. The views are not gonna be there versus what I think you can do on something like uh, you know Instagram or TikTok. But the people who do follow you and people who actually click and actually watch you are going to become um, the closest followers to you. They're gonna be people who know who you are. You're not just somebody out there who was force fed them on the algorithm, and and they might be interested and they might like the whatever. The, the Instagram post, or uh, they might like the, uh, you know, a TikTok video that comes through, but, um, you know, they don't really know you. So the so the YouTube is good because people actually, you know, kind of build a bond with you. And those people, if you're going to try to build a business, sell whatever it is, sell singles, sealed, do a service, whatever it is, those people will probably be some of your first customers because they feel like they know you, they feel like they could trust you, they want to support you, and, uh, you know, you'll you'll go from there. Um, so how do you grow on YouTube? Well, <laughs> you know, my, a lot of my growth was just from 2019, 2020, 2021, when it was literally, you could post anything and you'd get thousands and thousands of views, whatever it is. You didn't even have to be entertaining. You didn't have to be informative. It didn't matter. Views were just plentiful of uh, subscribers or, you know, it was a different time. 
if I had already started it like today, the growth would have not been even close to where it is today. I, I know I, I started YouTube at a very lucky time before the boom and people were searching like crazy on YouTube, especially because especially, you know, the, the pandemic hit and Logan Paul, these other influencers who had huge YouTube pages, all of a sudden YouTube was feeding the algorithm. It's like, watch more Pokemon content. Here's someone who has hundreds of videos already, right? Um, yes, so it was just lucky. It was, it was just lucky at that point. I mean, I had been grinding for a while before I even got to, you know, 50 subscribers, uh, putting out a ton of videos. Uh, so the views just aren't going to be there. If you're what, some person who's like, well, if I post something, I need 1,000, I need 10,000, you know, views on my whatever it is to actually feel like I'm accomplished. It's just... It's going to be a tough road. It's going to be a tough road on YouTube. But to, to grow on that, um, you know, if you are, and this isn't for those people, if you are, like, supremely talented, you're funny, you're charismatic, you know, you, uh, you know you're really good at editing skills and you're really artistic, uh, whatever it is, like, something like that, if you're actually just naturally talented, you're going to have no problem, no matter what platform it is, no matter what it is you're trying to promote, you're just going to be, you're going to be successful because, People who are actually naturally talented, naturally funny, naturally charismatic, naturally are entertaining, you're just going to get a following no matter what it is. That's just the way it is, right? I'm not talking to those people. I'm talking to people who are just normal people, probably not that, you know, they're relatively funny. They might have some sarcasm. Um, they're not particularly great at probably speaking. Uh, they're not flashy. They're not charismatic. They're just a normal person, right, out there. Uh, so, uh, so someone like you, you, you either have to be very informative, right? Know your stuff. Don't go out there and, and just put out stuff that you just half research or kind of half know and try to put it out there as fact. You have to be extremely informative or you have to be extremely entertaining. And I, I told you at the beginning, or not the beginning, just a minute ago that, you know, those charismatic people, it's, it's just for normal people. You might you might have to just really uh, and some people do this uh, force it for that kind of um, you know interaction. You can be the like super authentic. You don't put any effort into it. Your video you just kind of put it up, uh, you know, and it's not really that and you know and it's extremely informative. It's possible, right? Um, but it's going to be tough. Uh, all I'm saying about YouTube is it's going to be tough. Um, you have to be informative or entertaining, one of the two. And if you're not Honestly, Pokemon is so big, a lot of people get, still get views, right? People who just have kind of a, a decent thumbnail and a decent kind of clickbaity-ish title, and they're not really that entertaining, and they don't really have that great of takes, but they still get clicks because Pokemon is still an enormous market, and uh, they're, just, they're just not really uh, punished view-wise for something like that. Uh, but if you really want to grow that base, you're, you're going to have to be either entertaining or informative, and if you're not any of those and you're not, you know, kind of faking that entertainment wise, you're extremely authentic, but there's got to be something else because there are a lot of authentic people out there who get zero views. You got to be, have some informative takes. Don't just show me a PSA return. Show me why you bought it. Show me how much you bought it for. Show me how much you sold it for. Uh, what you're going to put that money into. The background and how you got it. Some interesting story about how you got it or how you found it and uh, maybe something about your, I, I don't know. You know what I mean? It, it just has to be something, something there to get you to click on it and stay long enough to audience retention to where I'm suggested your next video. And then I'm like, hmm, maybe I'll follow that again. Uh, that's how it works. If you click on and off, you probably be not suggested the video to the next person. Uh, so that's YouTube. This is going to be tough. It's going to be a tough road. Uh, next is, uh, Instagram. Instagram is, uh, I think much easier uh, Instagram is more uh, algorithm based, right? It's pushed out to people. It's not like someone has to click it to actually watch your reel or your post or your story. Well, your story they have to click. But um, anyway, um, so to start that, uh, a lot of Instagram I feel is it's either reels or posts. Now, stories are fine, but stories, when you post something, it's really only seen to your followers. And if you don't have a follower to start with, it's not going to be really uh, relevant. Now, when you do get, you know, a bigger base of people, showing stories can, like, feed those people what they actually followed you for. Um, so if you're, you know, starting a business and you sell a whole lot of, whatever, Japanese singles, then you post a story, it's like, oh, it's a sale on my Japanese singles, whatever, and those people who have followed are going to see that story. But if you're looking for actual growth, 
not the place to go if I looked at all my analytics. Um, all of it came from posts. Some of it came from Reels, but Reels, that's my fault. Um, Reels should have some kind of story to it, should be entertaining in some way, um, should be inform very informative in some way. You just can't post nothing and hope to get views. I mean, I'll just post pictures or reels of, hey, I'm flipping through a consignment thing, or here's a scanner showing us whatever. And it still gets thousands of views because we have, uh, you know, 10,000 followers. But, um, you know, if I had zero followers, I just, I, I you know, I wouldn't get, I wouldn't get many clicks on that uh, because there's not a story to tell. Remember, uh, Instagram will kind of force feed some of those reels, but to, for someone to stop, right, there's so much, there's an endless amount of content that people are scrolling through. So if there's not something to catch me immediately, and then when I am caught immediately for the next couple seconds, I better want to stay. There better be some entertainment value. There better be some kind of really informative content. Uh, if not, you know, very well edited. There has to be something there, right? You just can't put no effort into that. If you put no effort into that, you're going to get nothing back out. As for posts, posts can be a really, really good thing because that's where I've gotten most of it. I've gotten some posts have hundreds of thousands of accounts that have viewed it. Um, and what I've noticed is that the people who like to click posts for Pokemon, you know, kind of content for me, at least selling cards is comparing two things, comparison or three things uh, such as like, oh, here's a CGC 10, and a PSA 10. Wow, the CGC 10 sold for a lot less. Hmm. That's something where people see a post and it's like, huh, I'm stopping. It's like, it, it's, it's, it's at least slightly interesting. It's not just like a picture of a card. I've seen a million cards. I don't need to see it on a picture of a booster box. I don't need, I've seen a million booster boxes. I don't need to see that. Or a picture of a kind of, uh, even if it's a nice card, whatever it is, it's like, I don't need to see a picture of it. I've already seen a million of them. I don't need to see it again. This is force feeding me a billion of these. I don't need to see it. I need to see uh, a comparison. I need, so why, like, why? I, I think, why am I stopping this? Or how does that happen? So a lot of that is that, you know, I compare, it's like, oh, it's a black label of the same card compared to PSA 10 of the same card. It's worth five times, 10 times, 20 times more. And people are like, huh, and they get, uh, you know, you start to get comments and then people stop and then they look at the comments and engage. And then, uh, you know, Instagram will post it, push it out to more people. Um, so, you know, uh, it's not just that, but it's like doing uh, sales that are interesting. Now, you could put like, oh, record sale for this or record sale for that. And people, eh, that gets some kind of clicks. But really, those are once again a dime a dozen out there. Really, it's the interesting sales, right? It's like, hey, this card sold for this and this card sold for this. This card is as a pop of a, a lot less. And this card is a pop a lot more. This one's modern versus vintage. This one's graded by this company. This, you know what I mean? It's it's a comparison. It's kind of like a uh, you're creating a story in people's minds to be able to say, hmm, why is that? And make them think and... Uh, or people who are really deep into it probably know why something is worth more than the other, and then they'll comment, kind of give their expert opinion, and uh, you know get a little bit of engagement. They might get a little angry. That's fine, you know. And then somebody else comments, and then they, and then people like to stop that post and read long comment threads. And it just kind of becomes grows on its own. Um, but yeah, I have sales of it's like I compare a black label to a PSA ten, and I might get two hundred thousand accounts that see it. I will do you know very interesting. Uh, sales comparisons like we, you know, sold a first edition uh, Dark Tyranitar from Neo Destiny for like, I don't know, it was like $400 and then sold a French first edition PSA 9 card. Uh, you know, the English one was nine as well for like $5,700. It was, it was insane. Like, you know, we're talking 10, 15 times more in value for our French card and people don't really think French is more valuable because French base set cards, which is what you see most of, are worth less than first edition English cards in the same grade. But people don't realize, like uh, Team Rocket, Neo sets, uh, gym sets of like French cards are worth an extreme amount. Um, it's just an interesting post. It just is. I mean, it's not, I'm tr not trying to pat, uh, pat myself on the back, but it's not, you know, it just wrote itself. Um, and, you know, there are a ton of views on that. Hundreds of thousands of accounts actually viewed that post. So what I'm trying to say is that if you're going to make it real, if you're going to make a real, I mean, uh, make it interesting immediately, make it entertaining uh, immediately, make it informative immediately so people stop. And it's like because they have a million other options that they can just boop and they're just in the next one. And if you're doing a post, make sure it's just not a post of a card or 
a post of just like, hey, here's a, a neat thing and here's my flex of this thing. It might get some views, it might get some uh, likes, but if you're really trying to grow the account and get those people who never view your account, um, those are the type of posts to do. Like we got, like I said, I think the highest I saw was in a 30 day period was like 1.4 million impressions. 90, I wanna say it was 99.8% of the people that views those uh, uh, one point whatever million and four million impressions were not followed to our account. So it reached a whole lot of non-followers. Um, there was a small amount of conversion, which, you know, kept growing, you know, the followers. But, you know, if people see a post and like it or don't follow, uh, Instagram is going to send to them again. Because if they like something, you know, through all that and they stop for a second, Instagram sees that they see you stopped, right? And sees how much of the post you saw sees that you clicked in the comments and it's gonna suggest it again, it's gonna snowball from there. Um, so that's what my advice would be for Instagram uh, to, to grow your actual business. Third one this is gonna be very short because I did it years ago and I don't even know if it's still applying, but TikTok, TikTok is, um, didn't really grow our business at all because I never got anybody who said they, follow, they found us on TikTok and used the service. So I don't really know if it's even worth it to do TikTok, but uh, for the type of business that I was doing, but other businesses it might be, uh, TikTok was just like, tell a good story, uh, and that's it. <laughs> I mean, you can also be extremely entertaining, extremely charismatic. Once again, that will be successful in anywhere. But what it was is that in the first, like, second, right, the first, the very first second, hook them in with something, something in the first second, and then tell a story that'll hopefully go, like, I don't know, a minute or so. TikTok now pays people if your stuff is over a minute. And there are people that like have, they'll get a, a, a TikTok, um, you know, that will get a million something views and they'll get thousands of dollars because it's over a minute and, and TikTok pays those creators. I think you also have to have maybe like 10,000 followers at this point, but you can grow that and actually make money uh, on there. And I probably shouldn't have stopped making those, but I just, I kind of ran out of stories and I stopped. I, I ran out of stories and I had nothing else to uh, put on there. Uh, because I stopped putting stories, I stopped putting interesting things at the first second, and then it just died, it, it dived to nothing. Uh, and then that was it. And it really didn't grow the business, and if I'm taking the time to make a story and do the editing and, and put it out there, um, you know, it really wasn't worth it for the business. I could be doing something else on YouTube or, or, or Instagram or something else that'll actually be uh, uh, driving views to, like, the website or, or something like that. Uh, so those are the, probably the uh, the tips I have there. Obviously, from I said the start, if you are a naturally entertaining person, you're naturally funny, or you're naturally informative, you're really good at talking to the camera, you're going to be successful no matter what. It's just, you know, you're just going to be successful. But if you're just a normal person that really doesn't have that and kind of an introvert and, you know, like most people who collect uh, trading cards, let's be honest, um, you know, you're, you're going to have to have kind of a formula to figure out how to do that. And there's going to be a lot of trial and error. It's not going to work for everybody, but I thought I'd give you a few things that I've learned uh, over the over the years and uh, hopefully helps you out. Anyway, that's all I have for today. And thanks again for watching. We'll talk to you again soon.